Hello, St. Paul's. At last week's chapter meeting, a little cathedral history was made as chapter elected Betsy Monsell to serve as one of the five managers of Nutmeg and Olive, our LLC that negotiated the sale and development of the northern half of our city block. Betsy's election was significant because she succeeded to the seat that has been occupied since the beginning of the project by Kendall Squires. Kendall and his wife Amy now spend most of their time in North Carolina and Kendall recently discerned that it was time for him to make way for someone else to serve as an active manager. I'm happy to say, however, that he's willing to serve in an emeritus capacity, so we won't lose his extensive institutional knowledge and legal expertise. Kendall's been a part of the cathedral leadership for some four decades, including many years as cathedral chancellor, and he deserves to be thanked and celebrated. If we weren't in the middle of a pandemic, we would have a special evensong service and reception to honor his retirement. As that isn't possible, I asked Kendall to spend a little time in conversation with me, reminiscing about his many years in this community. So welcome, Kendall. How's the weather in North Carolina? Cold. Sunny, <laughs> bright and cold. <laughs> okay. So but tell not us. But really cold. Yeah. Have you had any snow yet? No, we rarely get snow, although some years I've told they do. Our experience, we've been here a year, was a small dusting in January. So you're not up in the mountains then? No, we're in the uh, mid-North uh, Carolina, what's called the Piedmont. Okay. So tell us what brought you to St. Paul's Cathedral and what kept you here? Well, what brought us there was Amy. We had moved uh, from Coronado, where we attended a church, to Bonita. And um, although there was a church there, Amy had had uh, some experience that of St. Paul's, and I had as well, knowing it to be the cathedral. And so we chose to go to St. Paul's, uh, in part because we appreciate the not merely the spirituality of the community, which underlies any church experience, but also it is a high church, uh, Episcopal church, and we like that and we miss it. Mm. And when was that? Probably 1984. Okay. Um, so when did you become chancellor and, and for how long did you hold that position? Well, I very quickly became informal chancellor with Jim Carroll. And uh, at some point, um, it, it just the word chancellor was used. <laughs> I don't know that there, were, there was never a chapter election or anything that I'm aware of. Um, the... I used to say that although it's a wonderful title, it means free lawyer, but it really involves, uh, well, I met with, uh, particularly with uh, Jim and then with John Chain when he became Dean every week. And along with, in those days, the Dean's Warden and two or three others, often including Jack Lentz. And we would just go over a wide variety of items. Mm -hmm. How long did you hold the position? 30 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and what, what was the most interesting part of being Chancellor of the Cathedral? To feel, uh, to feel that you were being, I was being of service, I also was an usher, but to feel that I was participating as others do fully in the life of the Cathedral and the opportunity to have a voice. I also meant that I met a large number of people who I, for various reasons, that I might other, otherwise have met within the cathedral community. What do you remember about the beginnings of the master plan project? Huh. Um, Early in my time at St. Paul's, literally within six or nine months, Jim Carroll uh, had uh, 
Bishop Morton appoint me as Dean's ward, as, as Bishop's warden to the chapter. And the very first issue which I was confronted was a plan long then in, dis, in planning and almost in fruition. And to the chapter was to vote on approving the sale of the parking lot for a small commercial condominium. Uh, I felt that that was a mistake. And um, eventually the chapter voted against that proposal, which I'm delighted they did. Otherwise we'd have a, we would not have what we have now and we'll have. Uh, but the North parcel was clearly there and the next concept was proposed by a uh, jointly by the Episcopal Community Services and the cathedral. And we looked very seriously at what would have been uh, a small building, but it would have housed their office staff and provided some transitional housing. The, that was merely discussed, it never went to very far. The next under John Chain was a very formal uh, process for what we call the Waltersdorf Center. And somewhere in the archives, there's going to be a big manquette of what the development would have been. By that time, we had had the opportunity to purchase what we call the cooking school, which is the property on Fifth and Nutmeg, which we sold a time ago. And the concept was a development of the Waltersdorf Center on what is the parking lot then, and a new parking lot where the cooking school was. Um, there were other aspects of that, including the closure of a Nutmeg Street, um, which could have been done, and I wish we'd have done it, but we didn't. So after that project, it was very clear that uh, the next thought was to use the building that was on the Fifth Avenue site for the music facilities. It was an old AP and P market and it had been used at cooking school when we bought it. We called it the cooking school. Uh, but it turned out that that would have cost more than the cathedral had at that time to renovate it. So it sat there and under Scott, we, there was, meetings probably every other week. And we talked about what might we do with this property. Let's stop right there because I want to go back. And yeah. before we get to, to Scott and um, his time, I want to share with you, um, Bishop John Chain shared some memories of this early time when he was Dean of the Cathedral. And I, I want to read you the story that he wrote for us. Kendall's support as chancellor was instrumental in helping us support the outreach to several persons who were not cathedral members, but who wanted to see the cathedral purchase the property to the south of the cathedral. That's the fifth and nutmeg mm -hmm. property. Property was for sale and I called the real estate company. They were kind, but said that I was too late because the property was already in escrow. He said, if you're still interested, let me know and I will get back to you if the deal falls through. And it did. The problem was that the cathedral, having very little financial resources to make such a purchase, was willing to do so if we could raise the down payment and then recruit parishioners and others to contribute. With Kendall's guidance, we were able to reach out to several influential folks in North County who agreed to help raise the money for the purchase. And had it not been for Kendall's lawyerly skill, I doubt that we would ever have been able to purchase the property. Kendall and Jack Lentz were the foundational supporters, along with Kathy Hopper, to begin the dream of the cathedral acquiring the needed funding to grow its outreach and ministry to the city of San Diego and beyond. So that was one of his memories of you. Well, that, so not, that was quite oh. wonderful. <laughs> that triggers in my mind that the property was a, the, it was a lease, a ground lease and the underlying reversionary rights and the groundies had the rights to purchase the underlying reversionary rights, but the sellers were reluctant to do that. And I do remember that I had to sue 
to uh, force them to follow through with the terms of the lease. Look at this. Well, good thing you were on the on the ball then. So Nutmeg and Olive was formed in 2004 and the Diocesan Standing Committee gave permission for part of the cathedral's land to be conveyed to Nutmeg and Olive. Uh, what are some memorable moments or milestones in the 16 year history of Nutmeg and Olive to date? Well, the first memorable uh, is, is the Standing Committee's uh, approval. And at we were in Canada very fortunate that Jim Carroll was then heading the Standing Committee because uh, we were between deans. And, or rather, we were between chancellors. Uh, so, and we met them up in Oceanside and they passed the resolution that you know of, which called for me to meet with Polly Getz to work out the details, which she did. And so when we formed it as a Delaware LLC, uh, our initial plan was to have an architect and planners give us conceptual ideas about what was possible given the shifting zonings. Um, after a period of time, we made the decision to, to hire Tom Delaney as our consultant. And that I think is a, that along with the enabling approval by the standing committee, I think it's two great milestones because Tom, if anyone has been more important than Tom, it might be Jack Lentz or Ken Trambucker, but Tom has led us and supported us for so long. And of course the, uh, we then put it out to uh, proposals and for a period of time, we were in conversation with another developer in San Diego, concluded that that was not in our interest. He wanted too much. And so we put it out and found Lennar. Lennar at that time, Lennar is a big developer, a big company. They had a San Diego office at that time. They were keen to develop what the Naval Training Center site, which has now become Liberty Station. And so accepting the contract that we proposed for our properties, that is the properties of the cathedral, worked with their concept to establish a presence in San Diego. And they have built several things here, but uh, that contract and every requirement we've ever had is to reserve space for the church and parking for the church and uh, gathering space for the church. Uh, Lennar was joined by another developer, CLB, who purchased the, who built the towers at the corner of, uh, what is it, leading into, into uh, Bevel Park um, and uh, on bordering the two towers. Mm -hmm. so, so they were reasonable. At some point, Lennar, left San Diego and after assuring us that nothing would change, they of course soon drew up, withdrew. But we had negotiated a very favorable contract with them, which they paid for the development permitting process. And they also paid for Tom for a long period of time. When they left, CLB took the project over. But CLB was not, then we had the real estate downturn and CLB did not have the staying power. So they withdrew. We then faced a decision, which was a, a significant for the history of the project as to whether or not to go forward because the permitting process had not been completed and the city had passed an interim height ordinance, which would have limited construction to, I think about 60 feet which was not our plan. Our plan was for two towers, one on uh, well, 14 stories, one on the nutmeg parcel and one on the olive parcel. The work had been done by Johnson Fain, a design company in Los Angeles, and they had a good design. We decided to 
go forward and to complete the permitting process with the approval of chapter, the Nutmegan Olive LLC borrowed, I think, two and a half million dollars. Lennar had spent about three million and we borrowed two and a half million. Uh, Jack Lentz was important in facilitating the actual loan with the banks that he was had a lot of influence in. So that enabled us to go forward and get a permitting process for the two buildings. Um, the market did not improve, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we then, at, when the market improved, we put the project out for offer. We received a number of proposals, uh, some of which were not, we did not accept because they did not sufficiently benefit the cathedral and, and the vision that the cathedral had for the use of the property. In the fullness of time, we decided to separate the project and first sold the nutmeg site, uh, principal motivation being we needed to pay off the loan. But that gave us the money to pay off the loan. And as we had the full development permits, we still had the interest in the olive parcel and some funds from the uh, sale of the nutmeg building. And so uh, after the next recession or, or property uh, bust, we uh, secured, uh, we put it out again for consideration received a number of proposals and selected, we selected our current developer mm -hmm. for that reason. Uh, and we kept chapter apprised of all of this, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and here we are today. Here we are, yeah. <laughs> the and the they've building. been very satisfactory. Uh, yeah. Our uh, relationships with the uh, company, Graystar has been good. Yeah. I remember very well the um, the day we closed on the sale of the nutmeg property because it was my first day at St. Paul's Cathedral. Ah, and I, to be I, handed a large check was was uh, quite an exciting thing for a new dean. <laughs> so what what would you what do you most treasure about your time at the cathedral? Just about everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, here's, here's one more memory from John Chain. He says, I think I gave Kendall gray hair when our first street procession did not have a parade permit and the police arrived with lights flashing. The next Monday, I had a call from then police chief, Jerry Sanders, inviting me to lunch to discuss our failure. Kendall was a diplomat by reminding me to be humble and plead ignorance. Jerry said we could be fined and then asked about our expectations for future processions. I shared Palm Sunday and St. George's Day and that the cathedral would be willing to pay for the permits. Jerry was kind and said no need and furthermore promised us police escorts for all the processions. So again, you were instrumental in smoothing the way for the cathedral. <laughs> Those were great plans. Those were wonderful experiences. Yeah. So what are your plans for the future? Well, um, the... Uh, current situation has uh, somewhat changed our plans for the future. We uh, moved here because Amy is an Eastern girl and uh, she wanted to be closer to her brother and her sister and which has been accomplished, uh, I'm happy to say. Uh, so that we're quite content here. We're very happy here. Our plans for the future are to learn more of this community. Um, we do have a church that we attend. We look to find other opportunities to participate in the life of this area. We also plan to, to spend more time or spend time in Europe and uh, especially Scotland, um, which we both like. And of course, we have ties in England, thanks to St. John. But um, we're both also studying. Uh, Amy is going to take a, a college, uh, a two-year college class in theology. She has a master's in theology, but it's just, it's a matter of cardinal importance to us both. 
Uh, oh, we have one other set of plans. Um, at some point, we're going to get a dog. All right. Uh, a, which, pan a pandemic puppy. <laughs> Uh, we won't be puppy. We're not. We we're not ready for puppies. Yeah. <laughs> no, it will be about a two-year-old. Okay. And uh, that's not just a casual acquisition, because a dog has responsibilities, and you have responsibilities towards it. Mm -hmm. And specifically, we're going to be getting a, a dog that has been trained for outdoor activities. Um, not really hunting, but also hiking and uh, boating. Very so good. We're, that's probably going to be our next really big project. Yeah. So, so do you have any final thoughts for the St. Paul's community? Yes, I do. Uh, the primary function of the church is to worship God and to celebrate his creation. Thank you for that, that wisdom. Kendall, you've given an enormous amount of yourself to the service of our cathedral congregation and on behalf of the whole community, as well as Bishop Chain and Dean Carroll, who, who have participated in this exercise, I thank you for your long ministry. We all wish you the very best in the next chapter of your life. Thank you. I'm delighted that this cathedral through the LLC is still a part of my life. Uh, St. Paul's in many respects will always be a part of our lives. Always. So, so to the St. Paul's community, I'll just say, see you on Sunday. <laughs>